How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So you read the title right. I have not been buying stocks as of late. And let me quickly clarify this before you all go down below, hit the dislike button, and roast me in the comments. I guess, yes, I have been buying stocks because I am a short-term trader. I focus on swing trading. I pull a majority of my income from the stock market short-term trading. So yes, I have been buying in and out of stocks. But by the title, what I mean by that is I have haven't been making many long-term investments as of late, and it all comes down to valuation. Recently, we talked about P.E. ratio, which is at a very high point right now over the historical value. We talked about the Schiller P.E., which is very high right now. It's at a 20-year high. It's at about 37, and the last time it was this high was back in the dot-com bubble back in 99-2000 when it was over 40, so the Schiller P.E. is very high. P ratios in general are extremely high. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to buy a stock wherever the value is, whatever the price is. I don't give a crap. I'm just going to buy it and hold it for the long term. And the truth is, yes, buying over time, smoothing out your um, average cost is a good idea. It, it really is. But when the markets are this overheated, and I don't want to get you guys angry to hit the dislike button, drop hate comments, whatever. I'm not trying to stir up any drama right now. But when the markets are this overheated, you have to ask yourself, if you are already, if you're already in stocks, maybe it's better to just have some cash on the sideline and not necessarily rush into buying up all the stocks known to man as of now. Because the truth is, and I've said this before, price is what you pay and value is what you get. And isn't it weird that before the whole crisis that happened back in March, February of 2020, the markets in terms of spy, they were at 340, right? That was back in February two, uh, 2020. Then the markets crashed to about 220. They dropped from 340 to 220, down about 30, 35%. And isn't it weird that we are a lot higher than that pre-pandemic level? I mean, a lot higher. We're so much higher um, to the point that we're about 25% higher. We're at 420 right now. And back before the pandemic, like I said, we were at about 330. And the truth is the economy hasn't nearly recovered yet. And this is all because of the Federal Reserve at this point, them having 0% interest rates, them printing money like crazy, buying bonds, and just continuously pumping and pumping and pumping. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is a massive bubble. We have to crash by half, you know, maybe 60, 70%. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I'm just trying to bring to your attention that we're so much higher right now than we were pre-pandemic and the economy hasn't yet recovered and we're seeing this big divide between the markets and what the real economy is doing. And that's what we've been seeing over the past 10, 12, 15 months. And who knows how long this lasts. But at this point in time, I feel like if you're already in the markets, let's say you've been investing for a couple of years, you have positions build up, uh, built up, you're up 50% on some, 10, 20% on others, 100% on some, who knows? I feel like the best thing to do, in my opinion, and this is what I'm doing, I'm not giving you guys financial advice, but the thing is, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to have a good chunk of cash. When markets are at these levels, when there's inflation fears where we might see the Federal Reserve potentially increase rates in the next year or two, the best thing to do is to prepare for that scenario. Because let's say they were to increase rates, what's going to happen to the stock market? What's going to happen to real estate, which both of these asset classes have been going crazy? I mean, come on, you guys know that real estate houses everywhere. There's 20 offers for each house. They're overbidding on all of these houses. They're going 50,000 over asking price or, you know, over market value, whatever. It's just a crazy market right now. And you have to ask yourself, when is this madness going to stop? And I'm not trying to scare you guys from investing in the markets because the truth is 
the best thing to do is not to time the market, but time in the market. You've heard this, right? Don't time the market. It's better to be in the market. And that is true. I agree with that. But at some points, you got to understand the P ratio is high. The Schiller P is high. And you have to be more, if you want to beat the market, sure. If you want to just uh, you know, be in line with the market, sure. Keep on buying. Smooth out your average cost over time. But if you kind of want to be a contrarian, if you want to outperform the market and make more money than the average Joe over the next 10, 20 years, the best thing to do is to do the opposite of what everybody is doing. And everybody right now is buying stocks left and right. They're going uh, to real estate uh, showings. They're buying the house. And the truth is, they're not even going to real estate showings anymore. They're buying houses online without even seeing the house. I mean, could you imagine buying a house that you're going to live in and you are not going to buy or to see the physical location of that house? I mean, I couldn't even imagine that. If I'm buying a house, I am going to see that house before I buy it. So the truth is, you got to be a contrarian in these time periods. I'm not telling you, again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not trying to scare you out of your um, stocks right now. But having cash is a position. Having uh, uh, gold is a position. Silver, having some Bitcoin, crypto, these are all ways that... You can hedge against the market, and maybe Bitcoin is not necessarily a hedge against the market. I mean, we've seen Bitcoin go down a lot more when the stock market goes down, um, so maybe it's not a hedge against the market. But having these different asset classes um, that are liquid that you're able to pull out and you know have some cash, this is the way to go right now, in my opinion, especially in my humble opinion, um, having cash and having gold right now. These are things that I'm personally doing so over as well. Um, and of course, I do have a little bit of Bitcoin, but like I said, Bitcoin's a bit more speculative, a bit more volatile. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a store of value right now necessarily. And maybe I get some hate comments for that as well, but that is just my humble opinion. So at this point in time, yeah, I haven't been making many long-term investments and patience is a virtue. Patience is key in the stock market, guys, because let me tell you, a lot of people, um, they got caught with their pants down when uh, the markets crashed, um, you know, back in March, you know, back in 2008, 2000, and they got completely screwed. They lost their shirts. They were not ready for what was going on. So let's say you have cash, you have some gold, maybe you have some uh, put options to hedge against a potential crash, a potential drop. That is the way to go. And somebody commented on my video, um, the the other day saying, oh, Amazon's not going to go to 1800. Oh, Apple's not going to drop under 100. And the truth is, this is the mania that I'm talking about. This is the mania that I'm talking about. People think that, oh, stocks are going to continue going up. They're not going to drop ever again. The truth is, guys, if you look at Amazon's chart, it was just at 1800 less than a year ago. It was just at 1300 about two years ago. So if you think that it can't go back down to those levels in another crash, I'm just, I'm sorry, but you are foolish because this could easily go down to 1600 again, 1500, 1800, 2000. It, it could easily happen. And me having cash, me being patient, that is where I am going to come in and add shares to my position and buy more stock. Because the truth is, like I said, Value is what you get. Price is what you pay. And the lower the price is, the lower the valuation, the better it is for you. And the quicker you are going to get to your goal of becoming wealthy. Because let's be honest, we're not in the stock market just to have some fun. We're not on the markets to go out on the weekend and be like, oh, I just bought this stock today. Oh, I just did this. I just did that. Sure. We like talking about stocks. Obviously, I make 10 videos a week pretty much at this point. Uh, but we're, we're, we're in the markets to invest to get closer to our goals, whether it's financial independence, whether it's uh, our kids' retirement or uh, college funds, our own retirement funds. Let's say you want to buy a house or something, right? And let me tell you this. How are you going to get to your goal quicker? Buying Amazon at $3,500 and then watching it crash to $2,000 or waiting till it drops a bit, 
even even if that means waiting a year or two and then buying it at two thousand. What is the what is the way that you are going to get to wealth? faster. It's buying at lower prices, buying when the valuations are cheaper. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I mean, this is more of an off the cuff type of video and I'm keeping it real with you guys. I hate these other channels out there. I'm not calling anybody out, but I hate the the way that they try and seem like, oh, nothing bad's ever going to happen because the last thing I want my viewers um, to go through is getting blindsided. Getting blindsided sucks. It sucks. And, and, and if you don't have a plan to, to kind of hedge against what could happen, the worst case scenario, you are going to get blindsided. You're going to get screwed. And then you're going to lose 50% of your money like that. And it's happened many times in the past. And you know how, and, and, and you know how I know that? Well, it's because I've looked at history, guys. It's very simple. Look at SPY. I mean, back in March, it uh, dropped 40%. Back in 2008, SPY went from 160 to 67 Back in the dot-com bubble, it dropped more than that, or it dropped a good amount. Let's put it that way. So looking at history, right where we are now, we are very overvalued, whether you want to hear that or not. It is the truth, and I'm going to give you guys the truth here on this channel. I'm not going to BS you guys, and yeah, if you like this type of content, subscribe, and like I said, let me clarify this one more time. I'm not completely stopping buying stocks. I'm still swing trading. I'm still doing my in and out type of trading to pull income from the market, but when I'm looking or, or, or what I mean by stopping buying stocks is I'm not buying right now many stocks at all that I'm looking to hold for five, 10 years. And that's just what I'm doing. And the truth is I already, I already have long-term positions built up that I feel comfortable holding at the average cost that I have. So it's not like I'm not in the markets. I'm just holding cash. And the truth is you don't have to buy stocks every week, every day. Sure. Maybe if you want to average in over time and to uh, you know follow the markets over time. Yes, you can do that. But if you want to beat the markets, you have to have a different strategy and you have to go against the grain. And we're going to leave it at that. So if you all enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Go down below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And this is not fear mongering. I'm just giving it to you guys real, unlike a lot of these other YouTube channels. And make sure to check out my Patreon if you want. If you want to see my buys, my sells, my call outs, what I'm doing trading wise. Whenever I do buy another long term investment, I post everything over there on Patreon. And yeah, that's down below. Or you can go to stocksurfest.com slash Patreon. You could also get two stocks from Weeble, 30 bucks from M1 Finance, 10 bucks from Coinbase. All of those are linked down below. I'll catch you all later on. Thanks for tuning in again. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there. Don't get caught with your pants down, guys. I'll see you all later. Peace out.